Hello. Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome to another forum. Yes, Friday. 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 Friday
you find all the fruits you could eat right here under the tree. Melanie? Yes, and also um, we've been meaning for it's the hot. last two weeks, Tony, to um, say our warm thank you to your son for some good work he's been doing oh, towards the show. My, my son, the IT guy, that's what I call him, the IT guy, is Kyle, Kyle Williams. He's one of those smart boys, folks. I have a son who's a smart boy. And so he can get it done. But he's into this music world. He, he produced, he got a lot of songs. You can look up Kyle Williams on YouTube. YouTube. Get a lot of songs out there. So you can check him out. He produced a lot of um, music and one or two artists. So he's young, he's only 22, but he's pretty good at what he do. Mm -hmm. And he made the jingle under the tree. Yeah, That's one of his work. Good. So I salute him too. For the young people are doing well, yeah. not because he's my son, but for the young people that are doing well. And so if you have a positive story, a kid that doing well, and you want us to highlight, highlight them. him, mm -hmm. we're glad to, do, to, share, to, to share, share your success tricks. story. And that's After what he's all, all about. It's, it's, it's parenting our topic today. Uh -huh. And we want to just also say thank you to those who have been responding to our posts. Send it around our topic. And we looked this week at what is the most important duty of parents. And we had among the selections, um, you know, protection, um, food and shelter, also um, love and security, Thanks. as well as um, being a good example. And we had a wide array of responses, and I just want to thank persons like Cresswell, who had so much to say, um, Marcia out of Jamaica again, um, also Sharon Brown, and um, thinking someone else that had, well, Jen Fernanda Roll and um, a few other persons. But anyhow, the thing is, most persons felt that a well rounded um, protection as well as being a good example. Now, there was one person that found it difficult. She said, there's no way that I can just choose one response. And she was Linda Evo Francis. And I really appreciated the dialogue that came through because there is indeed no way that you can choose one of them. However, from the um, selection that was provided, the one answer that would have encompassed them all was actually being a good example. And as we dialogue today, you will see exactly why that particular response was the one that would have covered the entire gamut of things. And then the other question that we posed was, does it still take a village to raise a child or can parents go it alone? and be successful. So when we look at parenting, Tony, what is parenting? What are we talking about? Well, when uh, I only can give you example what I see. Bahamian, keep it, keep it. You keep it Bahamian? Yeah, I'll give you example yeah. what I was taught in my home and it made me a great and uh, person to live in society now. Mm -hmm. One of the things I'm heavy on is respect. 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 That's okay. me. I, I, I respect a dog on the street, so I expect respect. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about parenting, and, and then a woman and a man mm -hmm. decide to come together and have uh, children, then you call yourself parent. Parents. That's when they come together and decide. When they come together. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Not necessarily decide, right? Because no, no, no. a lot of us end up being parents just because of bam, a night of passion. Yeah, but when you see more or five minutes of passion. Five minutes. She so don't take that long no more. One shake rattling roll. But 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 don't miss I don't want to miss the word. 
you know, I, I may tell you, um, you got all kind of parents. You yes. Got, you got you got yes. all kind of parents. So we yes. can go from there. You got the parent who just want a child mm-hmm. because my clock ticking. My time runs so like I got to do it in okay. now. Yeah. All right. Then you got parents that have in the family setting, mm-hmm. and then you got the parent who drop the child and somebody else's responsibility. Mm-hmm. So you got all kind of parents. Mm-hmm. And the one that I, I, I can talk about me because I came from a home and I don't want to nobody tell me that a woman can't bring up children or can't bring up boy. I don't hear that. You don't want to hear that. I come from a home where it was one parent. Okay. My ma, my pa dropped me the seed and and run. So I could tell you, don't ever let me hear the hymns run them over. No, no woman. I know my mother had six of us. Six. And we never went to bed without a food. And I never had a father in the home. But I had a father that I used to go to. Okay. Now, and so my mother was, what do you call it, single parent? Yeah. She was yeah. a single parent. So do you, I must let you know, we have also single parents. So we got, there's four or five different parents. Types of types parenting. Of parents, yeah. Okay. Homes that they In the Bahamas, do. what we normally do, the Negro like me, we drop our kids and we expect the woman to run. Okay. I ain't want no, no children. I, well, you, you want the children, so I only want fun and we... And you trying to make me a parent. Okay. And I won't be no parent. Well, actually, um, when we look at parenting, um, sometimes the father is in the home, but he is still not as involved in the raising of his children. But he can't. Why? Most of them. All right. In most homes today. Now, I'm talking from the perspective of not the Christian home. I'm talking okay. about the home where everything will run to hell. You know. So, so mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm almost tempted mm-hmm. to ask you, whilst you speak about not the Christian home, mm-hmm. maybe you need to tell us what is common and what's different between the Christian home and the non-Christian home because there was a respondent, Cresswell, who basically has this idea that the Christian home is the better home. Not necessary all the time, but the Christian home will fake it to make it. See, because I, in the church, mm-hmm. I can stay with you, but I can sweet out somebody else. But I can stay with you because, and I got to make sure the church, as I walk to the church, because it's a family. Okay. But it has nothing to do with what goes on, what goes on, on the day home. to day, Monday to Friday, so Saturday. I, and Friday. So I can stay there and say we build in this family mm-hmm. and we can be parent but most times in the home and I hate this because it can hurt my heart it can hurt my heart the mothers carry the brother the baby that's that, what happens in the Bahamian home yeah but but let's go back to the traditional family in the Bahamas that has always been the role of the mother mm-hmm. right and mm-hmm. perhaps it is in other countries as well Mm -hmm. But when you look at how the family profile has evolved over time, the mother back then, my parents' um, parents were set up in a way that even if the man only dropped the seed, he would also bring the green to feed the seed as it grew, right? But that's all all some of us do as men. We only... Feed the seed. Right. We don't want to be involved. See, we don't want to build. Let me let me, let me, let me see if I could put this in perspective for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We, most of our mothers, mm-hmm. boy, I'm getting trouble. Most of our mothers create this monster. Okay. And how did they do that? Uh, well, they bring us up to be fathers that they do everything for us they cook clean 
they let us stay in their house until mm, 30, 26, 30. Okay. And so once we stay there, mother do everything for us. So if I marry you, I take you to my house. Mm -hmm. You, you got to do everything for me do. You continue. It, it, it's like I so used. I want my mother and you. So mothers, mm -hmm. Tony is saying mm -hmm. it's the way that we as women raise our sons why the fathers their sons later move away and leave you at home to do everything for the children exactly and I, I i hear you saying that the mother is at fault but couldn't it be that the mother in order for her to get to her bed on time she took on the responsibility she gave the children some chores to do, mind you, but she still um, took on the responsibility of doing everything around the house. Now, again, I think of a conversation that I was having with a relative, and what that particular female relative hard, said hard. is that um, mothers love their sons and train their daughters. Exactly. And you know, I talking about the mothers and the, see, most times people stop me in the room and say, Well, you know, you gotta talk about this stuff or that. And then I go into these homes where they have these boys. Mothers cause a lot of this, you know. We say the men are not around, so then we, we pregnate the woman, so we drop the seed, we call it, and then she got it. But 90% of times, that woman, they, they, they try to run the family and run you, too, as a man. They try to control. See, women like, you think man like control? Women like control. So once the house, see, because also, too, men leave her to control it. Because once you do the, she do the dishes, she do the cooking, she do this, she goes, she buy the clothes, she does how much she cooks, she, mm -hmm. she basically do everything. Mm -hmm. So she make me seems like my job is only to bring the money. Is that's really, the only is parent. It, is it, she, is, that's the only parent she want me to do. Okay. I All try. Right. I try. I, I, I bring it to you. Not cut me off, but mm -hmm. I try to bring it to you. I put it. Re, let me put it real here. Mm -hmm. See, because people out there, they like me when I read. You try. You see some. You try to control your son in the house. Mm -hmm. The mothers like the son so much. She got this big gray boy. He won't wash the dishes. She would, he all day on the game. So I walk in. I said, boy, what you do all? Why don't you go wash the dishes? Why you? Well, mommy, tell me. Um, and you say, well, hold on. I am asking you to go wash the dishes. Um, all right. I come in. Two hours later. The minute you start scolding that son, there goes the there goes the wife. Um, leave the boy. He can do it. No, you do it now because I'm the man here and I actually do it. You do it now. There's gonna be a conflict now because now what's gonna happen to divide that? Because once he see me and you started to have this division, then the son gonna take side. Once that happened. It's, ve it's very difficult after that for as a father to control the situation at home. So what the father does, he decided, oh, I'm feeling with you all. We're all two together. Yeah, we, that's your son. You do what you want. And once he's turned off, he's so turned off because now his ego has been messed around with. So he's now really doing check. And so when he stopped checking, he not just stopped checking for the boy, he stopped checking for you too. Because he said, you know what? All right, since I ain't got no say here, my parenting stopped. And once you see a man parenting stop, you can forget that. Mm -hmm. Well, it, 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 it seems as what we have going on in that particular situation now it's hard, folks. is different parenting styles mm -hmm.
the parenting styles that I came across are four. You have the authoritative one. And that is where the parent infrequently, they punish the child, but not for every wrong thing. Or they use different types of punishment mm -hmm. styles. Then you have the authoritarian. And I think that is the style now that most men in the Bahamas have a tendency to use. You're rigid, you're strict. When I say move, you move. A military approach. Yes, but but it, it still goes back to us working as a team. See, exactly. These so, children are very sharp. Exactly. They ain't dumb like me and mm -hmm. you when mm -hmm. you come up. Mm -hmm. See, because our parents wasn't that educated. Right. So these kids not educated and so on, we are not educated. So now, what the, the we could we could have we when you read, read is knowledge. Mm -hmm. These kids are reading every day on their line, mm -hmm. so they get they gain a lot of knowledge. Knowledge. Back is in power. the day, right? Back in the day, we didn't have no computer. No, we had a lot of books. Right, but remember this now. But we were based on Christian principle, so most of us come up to coming from the church perspective. We used to go to church every Sunday. It was a mandatory that everybody go to church. Mm -hmm. So, the fear of God, and so we fear a parent. Okay. Our parents almost like God. When they speak, there were no questions. No question. You it, just it, do. Now, now. Speak now. now. These children won't beat you up. <laughs> so, okay. but, These but will beat you, you up. You, you, you introduced a very important transition mm -hmm. in, again, the family profile, the level mm -hmm. of education has changed. And um, kids are far more knowledgeable wow. than their parents were at their age, mm -hmm. okay? And it's not from experience. But imagine you investing in your child's education say mm -hmm. from preschool straight up to university. Mm -hmm. And education, as you say, knowledge is power. It, it enhances your ability to think broad and deep. And here it is now, you, the parent who is not as educated, you are telling your child, it's this way. And the child is saying, but, and you're like, but nothing, but shut up. What are you doing to your child? You're basically wasting your counter productive in the approach because you, when you pay for your child to be educated, what, you just want him to have the knowledge and keep it in his head or you want him to be able to utilize that knowledge? Mm -hmm. But, but like you talk about different type of parents. Mm -hmm. There are still two that yeah, I they, haven't covered. Yeah, okay. The one that we basically talking about is where that authoritarian, the, the authoritarian, rigid, and right. strict. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, so, so this parent has taught has only using what he was taught. Uh -huh. mm. And is it always right? It worked for him and his mother. Yes. So he believed he his perception is that it worked for him and his mother. Right. So he and it worked for me and my children. Worked for my children, but it don't. It don't. It's a okay. total different ball game. Let me let me explain. Why it doesn't work? Mm -hmm. um, the kids today, as um, it's a different generation, mm -hmm. they will ask questions, and the problem we have today is that we brush them off. We never answer the question. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions, now you know I don't play. I straight cut. One of the questions sometimes kids ask me, "Well, what do you, Daddy? What are you and Mummy doing?" So do you say, making love, this is what we do as a parent. No, we can't. This this way we go wrong, folks. No, we can't do this and say this because. So what's wrong with your kid knowing that you make love? This is where you show love. This is how the kid learn. The kid know now, daddy and mommy, happy. Daddy and mommy are together. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they love one another. So this will show love, passionate, caring. So it's it, it teaching the kids something. But the problem is we hide so many things from the kids. Now let me let me let me give you I, I'll give you 
something happened to me when I was younger. Mm-hmm. And I understand, I understand why some parents don't do it. So some kids more advanced than some. There was a situation, one time I went to Montague, Montague Beach, me and my mother. We had this black wax oil car in Montague. And we were sitting there, you know, you, you know, back in the day, there used to be a van on Montague. This long time, this is about 25, 30 years. Because there'd be a little van on Monkey where they sell popsicle, mm-hmm. icicle. It used to be there all the time. No, I think they still have an ice cream truck you like think parks it? out there. Okay. Yeah. One time, when my, so as you go to the beach, we used to sit out there, sit in the car. But we parked under this coconut tree. Mm-hmm. And uh, being up with this car, just pull up in the coconut tree. This guy and this girl, he got this girl laying up on this tree and he kissing her up in the tree. So my mother, she's sitting in the car, she say. So I say, oh, mommy, look, look, you be kissing one now. Shut, shut up. You ain't seen nobody kiss. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? I see nobody kissing. But that's what all the parents do. Mm-hmm. They they will shun certain things from you to keep you, don't worry, keep you safe. But in some cases, you're not keeping them safe because now I'm inquisitive. So I, you make me more inquisitive to research or inquire. And, and inquire yeah and go online because you got a line you get you know so so when you do that to kids today the kids just go underground and research so what you doing see education is the key and the whole parenting education is key. common sense is one of the greatest key because you gotta make sure your child have some wisdom you got a girl who's 14 a little homo side moving. Mm-hmm, body you can't change. tell her go in the room lock up, you know. Because no. the minute you go, she go in the room lock up with something. <laughs> so you got to, it's a real world. So you got to educate your children. So a good parenting is education, knowledge, share knowledge. See, because when your child comes to you with something, you have to be able to have a good conversation. Yes. You have to do that you, and you have to do it and make sense to the child. Because if you make sense to the child, the child can ask somebody else on the outside. Yes, yes. So, good parenting first start with good communication. Amen. Key number one. Common sense. Don't forget. Listen. You have for us being smart, but we got common sense. Yes, yes. And a lot of people in the Bahamas are smart. Now, not because you got bachelor's degree make you smart. Because I can break that down to you now. Let me tell you why I can say that. If you so smart, let, man, I started educating. If you so smart, why are you still working for somebody else? You got a bachelor's degree, you still working for somebody else. If you were smart, you had your own business. That's smart. Think smart. And that ain't gonna resonate with you until two weeks, three weeks down the road. That's the same conversation. Because you went to school all these years, but you're still working for the man. Who talk bad to you? All these years, you ain't smart. Because if you were smart, you will come back and create your own wealth. That's all I'm saying. Let's go back to the parenting and wisdom. Oh, sorry, yeah. I, I, I sorry, I got share some wisdom. You know, I, I sorry, folks. I, 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 I you it have hot. you have actually um, hot. It's hot. It's touched hot. a very um, the key word that you use that I like in all that you've said is the parent is the teacher. Yeah. The parent is the lifelong teacher of every child that he or she has been invested with to provide guidance and education on all realms of life. Now, what I noticed, Tony, especially in 21st century, is parents focus a lot on providing material things for their children. Now, I looked at Abraham Maslow. He is this psychologist Psychologist, who talk about what human beings need as basic necessity for survival. And we have mastered the physiological need, but we don't provide the air but we make sure that water, food, and a house is there for the child to sleep. 
we also make sure that they have clothing. Now, you talk about the reproductive part of it. That's a basic need as well. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I realized as, I, as we started, we talk about the different type of parents and the fact that two people come together. Mm -hmm. But parents are not comfortable with talking about reproductive aspect of our life. I always said, I, I, I've observed it. Nobody talks about it, but everybody's doing it. Mm -hmm. And we're not doing it right. The church has a part to play now. Because we have, for, I don't know, from as long as I have focused on reproductive health, I realize that there are some churches, one, who do not, well, I would say all churches tell you, fornication is a sin. If you're not married, you shouldn't be engaged in any sexual relationship with anyone until you are married. Then... It goes on where another church takes it to another level. If you're married, then you shouldn't be using contraceptive because man's duty is first to what? Multiply, mm -hmm. be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. But in order for you to be effective parents, there are some basic fundamentals that you must not choose or opt to you must be able to provide okay maslow on his first level mentions the physiological then he talks about the safety security resources health property that's another thing when i was growing up parents always guide their children as soon as they get a job instead of a car what you do you find a piece of property and you begin to pay because now later down the road when you find the girl that you want to marry as a boy you must have a piece of property to um build a home for your family then we have the love and belonging friendship intimacy family a sense of connection all of these are things that we as parents are supposed to be guiding our children towards okay then that um esteem respect for self um having recognition having strength and also having freedom the freedom to be who you are these are the things that parents should be instilling in their children but now if you're a adopting this rigid approach when do you find the time because now when you say to your child shut up or i say do this come do this now it puts a sense of fear that child doesn't feel comfortable with you to come to you when there is a challenge when there is a concern when there is a question when there's something that they don't understand not to forget the part about finances and saving a little for rainy day things that parents should be teaching their children. Don't you agree? Agree, 100%. But, I never have. See, it is, okay, let, let me go, let's go, let's go back. Yeah, okay. and we got to go way back. Yeah. Because let, I know that okay. these were the things right. that my grandparents taught their children. Mm. And I think everyone had their little plot and everyone, even though the family came together. Family togetherness is another thing that I see yeah. have literally faded out of our society. We, we go back to one of the topics that you had. Mm -hmm. And we talk about the village. Yes. Okay. That's going back to the same thing you talked yes. about. Let's go back to the village. Um, we don't have that no longer. When we talk about, let's keep it in your family, mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. when they say the village people think they mean most towns a locality yeah yes. yeah yes. yeah no what they meant let me let me explain what the village is what is missing in our parenting today when i was growing up you had auntie 
Swami, mm-hmm. he had older sister. Mm-hmm. In my case, was older sister. My older sister would act as the mother. Mm-hmm. Basically, she grew me up, okay. not my mother, okay. because she was taught that when I, the parent, mm-hmm. is not here, yes, the oldest, you child. are in charge, mm-hmm. and so she, she treat. It's like indoctrinated. You boys, you go, this who I put in charge. Mm-hmm. When I leave from here to go to the straw market, to go cooking in people's house in life, you keep, to go on the job, wherever it is, this who's in charge. So, if, and she, she, she instructed, if something go wrong, auntie next door, or Grammy in the back house, mm-hmm. you go Get the adults. Get right. the adults. So what had happened, my auntie and Grammy them, they will go crazy if I break that cover in that my sister. Yeah. If my sister say go pick coconut and back it. You go and do that. I go back it. Mm-hmm. Or oh, I get back. <laughs> and I, I ain't getting back. I'm talking about my parents. I ain't getting back from one parent. I can get back from my grandmother. I can get back from my mother. And then I can get back from my dad. So I get three back in. So, and the rule was like channeled right down. Mm-hmm. It didn't change. Even though they were lying. <laughs> even they even they tell a lie on you. Oh, once okay. that one's lie that you right. mean. It's gospel. It's go- if, if she say you didn't back the coconut and you back it. Mm-hmm. And they eat it all up. Once she said that, when Grammy come, you getting back, everybody getting back. So what it was, it was instruction followed. Yes. It was. And the, the line of authority. There you the go. Chain of command. Chain of command. Everybody so, knew and the respect was there. Right. I, I could identify the li- with that. The I line of con- They were line. Yes. They were line that set and president yes. and stone. Yes. And so once that is set in place, there were no nothing broken everything was one line no variation no variation no excuse today what we have first of all we leave our children home local homes because we selfish oh the, lock the door don't let nobody in so the neighbor next door then somebody breaking in your house with your do- your good young daughter you ain't got nothing to say because you don't lock them in the house you lock them by the cell so what you saying i don't speak to my neighbor and so, um, but that happens. Let me tell you, we got to go where it happened. How has changed. This is where it go, come from. It comes from the fact that classes, our child I better than them. I don't speak to them. You know, the classes. That's where our started from. Yeah. Status. Status. Mm. And so, you don't like your neighbor, but when your child get raped, you around the neighbor because you see anything, you hear anything. But, but you only want a neighbor come. So, so the, 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 the standard that the standard has not been set in these parents in the parenting. You parent, and I can call you. You let anything go in your house. You let anything go around you. So, so what do you expect your child to do? If you, you need to set a standard and live by it. Now, I'm not talking when I say standard. I'm not talking about Jalil. Sweetheart come into the house and you know you got any hiding and coming to the back. No. Children ain't dumb and stupid. Sit your daughter down. This is the man that I wanna love. Bring him to the right way, to the front door, not the side door. Children are smart today, they're not dumb any longer. So the rules are set from day one. No Know your children, Melanie. You gotta know your children. To be a good parent, you gotta know what you're dealing with. You gotta know. And it's okay for children to have their emotions. Children's a human too. They get their feelings like us. Yeah, they do. They, 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 they see things probably different. Mm-hmm. So you have to let them mature. You trying to make them into you. And you don't screw up. 
But now you try and say, well, you know, I ain't gonna let my child go. No, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Slow down. Children ain't dumb. They're gonna smart. We give them the guidelines and they follow. Some of them break break the channel. But then you deal with them. Now let, let I, I wanna deal with this issue because they somebody called me on this, so I, I glad now I could deal with this situation. Your child smoke dope. He don't listen to you. You don't know what to do with him. You he come in the house he fourteen. He come in the house when he feel like. He go when he please. He eat, he do. But he smoke dope in, in my house. You hear the words I say? He smoke dope in my house that I pay for. Now let me tell you something. Let me tell you what to do with him. There's a law for everybody. If you don't want to rule in my house, I find somebody to rule you. Now, how that song, that might be harsh, but I should straight shoot up. Because the next time you smoke dope, I can call the police and lock you up. Because you got a line. See, you love these children too much. Especially these boys. Listen, there's a rule. If you say, don't smoke no dope in my house. And you come home, and you smoke dope in my house. I meet your friend over, and you smoke dope in my house. The, the next level, you gotta feel. I don't care, you gonna feel. And if that don't work, and see, I, I cut from a different cloth. All that prettiness, I can't do that, people. I just different. You gonna feel it. Because if you didn't go that way the next time, you ain't living in here. 14 or not, the rule is, is rules and I can rule my house. Some of you let me damn children rule their house. Sorry, but you can't let these children rule you. You're the parent. Look around. Parents, just look around. Just look around. Melanie, I gotta say this. I, 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 I can come back. Mm -hmm. Every Negro time, 15, 14, all of a sudden, they were smoke dope. I don't know what it is, but check it out. Check, check the record. Majority of them who smoke in dope, they ain't got a job. They hang around the place. But there's people who campaigning for this dope. So I'm going to say this to you, you parents who have these kids who smoke the dope. If you want your children to become productive children in life, you gotta, you gotta put your foot down. You gotta get it from young. You gotta, you gotta. I, I give example of this. I have two boys. They don't smoke dope, and if they smoke dope, they ain't gonna smoke dope in my presence. If they smoke dope, they, they ain't gonna let me know, cause I go crazy on them. That's just my style. But going back to parenting, I have this thing. And I look around a lot. Mm -hmm. I am disturbed, really, in the Bahamas today. That everybody's, when they get 14 in these junior school, they smoke dope. Now, let me tell you where the parents, I think, well, we go wrong as parents. When you see your son start to smoke dope and you realize it, you realize it early. That is a, that happens because not sometimes you don't tell the kid how beautiful, how special they are. You don't you don't you don't share that enough. See the love and the kid gotta feel that love. Gotta feel that he gotta feel that his mother care. And so he his goes father too. Yeah, uh, the, the, the man the father's no, 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 don't yeah. let the, the fathers, fathers off the hook. The fathers too. Yes, the fathers, especially for boys. I can school them. I can, I can, get, I can get the fathers to be at you know, I can do, I can do the parenting. But I don't want to lose my trend because this is important to some parents who are watching this. This is very important. Mm -hmm. And so, when you see this kid smoke that dope, that ain't just happen because they want to smoke dope, you know. It happens either. Uncle smoke it, the 
big brother smoke it, the cousin smoke it, somebody in school. So, you know what that means? That means you didn't make that influence on him and make him what happened. He lost somewhere along the line your teaching or your communication to him was off. Because if you have the proper communication with your child and good understanding, and once you tell them something that stay in their brain, my mother told me, I'll never forget, my mother told me when we were young, she said, boy, if you marry a bad woman, you're going to live in hell. I never, I never forget that. Certain things your mother tell you, never forget. So, what you still instill in your child, it will carry on. Some guys you meet, you say, Why oh, daddy don't fight my mom? They tell you, Boy, let me leave that alone because my mom, I don't get my mother stressed. So, your teaching is sinking some of these young men. So, there's something along the line, your teaching, you, you, you're still busy trying to make money to pay bills. I am happy that you ended with that because as I listened to you, I realized that some parents, in spite of the fact that the children live with them, they fall under the other two categories of parenting style. One is uninvolved emotionally as well as physically. And then you have the permissive parent one who values the child's autonomy Mm -hmm. and so they will not be as strict as the authoritative parent right but one thing i want to come back to and that is communication 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 begins from in the womb oh yeah there you go from in the womb the womb. You love the kid the, when they baby, but when they get a baby, you don't love them at all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, and and babies are not children are not uh, baby alive. They're not there for us to pretty up and 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 have compliments coming. Oh, she's so cute. That's the only. Oh, reason. that's a lovely. And then you know, don't talk about the name brand items. Oh. These children in Nike and Jordan and. All of these other name brand clothing, footwear, from they are infants. They outgrow them. What sense does it make? But that's another topic. You put, you just you just open something. It, it's, it's you a, just you just open something. Yeah. Let, 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 let me let me let me scold some of these kids, some of these young children, these young ones with these baby for these man who married and these ones who drop in these children and that's let me, let, me, let, me, let me say something to you. Let me say something to you. I, I look at me again. I ain't still, right in front of you. I, I, I want this straight, this straight talk. You young children, who are in these children? Well, you know the ones I'm talking about. You embarrassed to take them out of the car because they're so rude. You can't take them in the food store because when you take food, they're pulling down everything in the store. And you all about, Charlie, or oh, he just. He just, he's just aggressive. What aggressive? That's rudeness. You didn't train your children. You rude, stinking children. You don't bring them out in the public. They ain't know how to behave. They pulling on people. They all through time. They all train your children. My mother cut my hip when I was a child. What do you mean? Oh, you don't be child. You don't be. The Bible tell you beat them. We didn't say kill them now. We didn't say beat them. I mean, but you know exactly what I mean. Discipline them when they step out of line. Let's, let, 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 let me add to that, ahead, Tony. Ahead, yeah. um, because some people think, oh, the child doesn't understand. That's cute. <laughs> but that's not true. When yeah, a child I... comes, just like you buy a telephone or a computer or an iPad and it's blank, but you put into that computer, into that device, what functionality you want from that device. It's the same thing with your child. You must, that child comes as a blank slate. He has some instinct. He knows when he's hungry and so he cries. But when he poops, 
and he wants to be changed, he can't tell you. He cry again. You have to learn that child. That child have to learn you. You are preparing that child to exist as a member, a functional member of the society. And so therefore, um, the child has to develop, the child has to learn. And you, as the child develops, you guide that child along the right path. So some kids will go and they will take every pot or pan out of your cupboard. It's good as long as it's no danger lurking, but when it's time to put the pan back, you communicate with the baby and said, come honey, let's put it back now. You've played with it. It's time to put it back. You know, we must keep our home clean. That's how your child learn. If you have your figurine, um, some persons, oh, I know, I, I know of an figurine? environment, yes, Even <laughs> where the child cannot mm. explore. That's a child. The child is going to experiment. Yes, it may tree. be that you want your house to look nice. But if you are in the child rearing phase of your life, put it up high if you value it. Um, or you tap your baby on the hand and say, nope, don't touch it. And after several rounds of it, that baby will look at that and it'll look at you and it'll look back again. And depending on how you communicate with that child, it will determine whether that child will touch it again. Now, some people have the thing, I tell you once, and I tell you, tell you, tell you, right? That's abuse. The child, repetition deepens the impression. Learning doesn't take place with one encounter. It takes several encounters. So it's be patient. Remember, whatever you give your child, that child is going to give to someone else or give back to you. Mm -hmm. And then there is this thing, okay, so you spank the child and the child spank you back and somebody in the neighborhood or in your, oh, he's so rude. Is the child really rude? You say, no, you don't spank back. Mommy is teaching you. You teach the child. It's not right to spank back. Don't allow people, I call it the parental pressure point where people tell you, oh, you got to do this and oh, you got to do that. You must learn your child. Your child must learn you. But you must also frame your child's training within the environment in which you are preparing him to move. Okay? Um, coming back to the community, the village. The village. The village is always... See, the village is gone now. The village so, is still here, but the village but is, it, it has narrowed down to selective few. The village is causing more problem than it is. The village is teaching your child how to smoke food. The ah, village is teaching so your the child how to, of the how to sell her body for dollar. Oh you see, the village is now gone. See, the Bahamian principles has changed. It's all of. See, I think we adopt the American style. Yeah, we definitely and so we have a lot of influence from but the you, Americans. But you know, parents, let me let me give you. Anytime, what, there's signs. Let me give you something. That I moved to the neighborhood just before we about to do the show. I do a little, you know, I do my little study and check out what's going on, and so I can be. And you know, you, you, and you do, do you know? You go through them community, like I went through Anglistan off the Dolio Street, and then I went through Yell the Elder. You know, by 6 o'clock in the day, you know, there's too many. PM or AM? PM in the day. Yeah. Right? There's too many children in the road. Just six, it, 6 in the evening. It, in all the communities, basically, we call over the hill, mm -hmm. it's just too much children in the road. Let, let me explain. You know, if you go to certain states or go certain places, you very rare you see children in the road. But we grew up in the road. No, hold on. You grew up in front of your house in the road. Yes, yes. You didn't go down the road. In clusters, right. especially clusters yeah. of boys. Yeah, uh, when you see that, it's you just get too much children. You see, it's too much children together riding bikes, a whole pile of them. When we, Back know, in the day, it wasn't as many yeah, vehicles. Yeah, yeah. So the danger... But it's just too much... Late at night, 
it is too many young children in the road. See, listen, at a certain time, children should be in the house, not even in the yard. Listen to us, not even yeah, yeah, in the house, preparing their minds for the next day. Listen to what I say. Let's do that again. Preparing their mind for the next day. After you done run up and down, you need to settle down so your mind and your thought process could be clear for the next day. That's why we sleep. That's why we set. See? What? See. I can tell you that yeah. is something yeah. that we need to really cover in an entire segment. Yeah. The that, example that, that mm. we set for mm. our children. Because mm. children, you know, our time is, is just about gone. That's but I, I, I just want to, to mm. really look at our basic instincts mm -hmm. and what is within us innately and what as parents we should be really Time flying, focusing boy. on in terms of being effective parents now there are values you talk about yep. it right values. um there are, are, are traditions within the culture okay um there are moral standards within the society within the church a lot of us go to church and we are a christian nation coming back to press that's only talk and his listen thing. that christian nation thing is only talk because we do listen let, 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 let's let's set the trait let's <laughs> i know i know you go, you can shake your head because you won't be stuck. all right let's just set this plate I, I can tell you the word christian nation means that we have a lot of people who talk God for everything, mm -hmm. but no substance. Okay. Now let me let, let me let, let me share something with you. We can take on religion. Yes, we, in a couple. Oh, weeks. in a couple of weeks in we can take on weeks, religion. Yeah. But let me share this with you. All. If me and you started having a discussion about religion mm -hmm. and Christian nation, and you say the word you start quoting i start talking about what's today what's happening today in the christian society and the nation the real the, the the christians that i'm concerned of they will start it to throw the bible on you mm -hmm. they use the bible as cover up so they talk christianity so it, it it's a tool. It's a it's a so tool it, to get that Christian there, thing to is, have your way. Let's stop that. Let's I not cutting you off. Let's say we strive to be a Christian nation. Because our action Maybe we should matter. strive to be godly people. There you go. Girl. Godly you, people, you not Christian. I, I say no more. You yes. continue on your godly yourself. people. Because Christ yeah. himself was godlike. Godly. Yeah, like there you go. Godly in his demeanor. But anyhow, coming back as we wrap up today's session, um, we have only touched the tip of the iceberg when it comes to parenting. But what I want to do, I want to look at some of the things that are innately human and what parenting is really truly about is seeking to establish a balance within us as individuals for our survival within the human race. So here we have fair. Children learn fair from, our, from their parents, even though it's innate. If I see a snake, depending on how I respond to that snake, it's how my children will respond. If I go to that snake and pick that snake up and just throw it on the side, when my children see a snake, they won't go running away. That's because as a parent, I have taught them the snake is harmless. There's anger. How do we control anger within ourselves and teach our children how to bring their anger into control that it does not work to their detriment or the detriment of others? Of course, there's shyness. Not everyone is shy, but some children are shy. How do parents help their children overcome their shyness so that they won't be left behind, they won't be taken advantage of? And the list goes on. There's curiosity, there's affection, there's sexual love, 
curiosity again, jealousy, envy, rivalry, sociability, sympathy, modesty, imitation, constructiveness, secretiveness. All of these we find in our children. How do we as parents, or are we aware, are we in tune with our children? Parenting is really about helping our children to be productive, well-balanced, well-adjusted individuals, being able to say no when it's appropriate, being able to say yes when it's appropriate, being able to be respectful to those around us for property, for person, for opinion, for differences. I find that we have a very difficult time accepting differences. We're not all the same. So if in my home, I say it's okay to have a glass of wine, don't let somebody in the street, oh, the Bible say you aren't supposed to drink wine as a marker. As a parent, I have that right to teach my children because I now must make sure that they are able to know that when they go out there, because I withhold it from them in the home and everybody else out there is doing it, oh, they just go overboard. Have you ever seen that? Your children are one way when they're with you, but when they're with their friends and with other people, they are a monster and you can't believe it. It's like, that's not my child. Who is that? It's because we do not open the gate within our homes to teach them about every aspect of life, finance, parenting, um, property management, time management, temperance, taking care of your body, cleanliness, um, eating properly, choosing your own path as a career. As Tony mentioned earlier, many of us want our children to fulfill the gap that we missed out on. No, our children are individuals. They have their own God-given purpose, interest, desire. We are there to guide, to stare. From our experience, we say, you know, are you sure this is what you really want to do? Tell me about why you want to do this. Engage them in conversation so that they can think critically, evaluate. One thing that I always did with my children as a parent, I allow you, I'm, I'm, I'm more of the authoritarian type, uh, 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 authoritative type, sorry. I like my kids to explore for themselves. But one thing I teach them in every choice that you make, there is a consequence. So think clearly whether you are going to take this or whether you're going to take that. Even choices in food. Some parents, this is what I give you, you take it. No question asked. You don't work as the man. Whatever you push down your children's throat, somebody else out there in the street is going to copy and push things down your children's throat. Give them an opportunity to make decisions. Give them an opportunity to make choices. And I am going to finally close by using this particular statement. Many of you would have heard it. It says, if a child live with criticism, they learn to condemn. If they, learn, if they live with hostility, they learn to fight. If they live with shame, then they learn how to feel guilty all the time. If you show them tolerance, they will learn to be patient. If you encourage them, they will have confidence. How many of our children have confidence today? It's because we put them down, we knock them down. Oh, you ain't gonna be nobody. You're just like your no good pa. You're just like this one, that one, the other. You kill the spirit of the child. They, in turn, become what you say they will be. You know, we like to talk about power in the town. In psychology, they call it self-fulfilling prophecy. Oh, you don't say I ain't gonna be no good, so I don't have to strive to be anybody. Huh? If you give them security, they will learn to trust and have faith in you as well as others. 
if you give them approval, they will have self-love. How many people love themselves? They're too busy trying to love others, trying to please others, and leave themselves undone. So, yes, parents, there is so much more that we can share with you today, but our time is gone. And we may, based on the feedback that we get, at another time, present part two, where we can pull out some of the elements that are critical to parenting that negatively affect our children. Oh, please do not speak negatively to your children, no matter how upset or annoyed they make you. You deal with them in a way that is effective, that they will not walk away hurt, broken, crushed, and go out to the community looking for someone to show them love. Tony? And as I close, parent, I want to talk direct to you. One of the worst things you can do as a parent, parents, parents, parent, yeah. parent, oh, as parents, as parent, yes. is buy love from your children. Buy love. Wow. Okay. Stop buying love. Let me explain what I meant. If your child don't achieve something, then you don't give them nothing. Oh. You don't need, if your child, you set the standard in the bar. Mm. And if they don't meet that requirement, you don't have to buy their love. Okay. When they work for it, they get it. You don't have, see, it's just like you marry a, a wife. You expect her to be and do certain things. Mm -hmm. So, as your children, you expect them to be to be the child, and they expect you to parent. So, when they do good, they expect you. Most times, they come to you and say, "Well, Daddy, you know, if I get on the honor roll." Would you do this? They come to you with it. And you will so say... That's the, yeah, they're looking for you to give them an incentive. Incentive. Yes. But don't you go and buy a child a computer when they're not doing good in school. Okay. So those are rewards. Reward Re rewards. Good, good behavior, good performance, but do not reward laziness. And you don't have to take a child to the mall every day, buy them this, buy them this, just to keep them in your corner. Mm. All you're doing is playing with fire because you are starting something that will grow to be big. Yes. So, if your child cry a lot and be rude, you came to the mall in Kelly's and buy him a toy just to shut him up. What you're doing is setting yourself up for the biggest breakdown because that child now smart enough to understand yes. that I can cry and, and I get, what, get I want. what I want. So, and don't. I understand you do that because you're trying to speak the child up and speak the child to love you. Hey, hey, hey. The child gonna love you. Once you set the standard, they gonna love you. Yeah. They, they gonna love your standard because they realize, oh, mommy don't like that. They know. They, these kids are smart. And so, on my closing, man, is that I'll say train up a child. In the way he should go. And he should never what? Depart. <laughs> when he get old, he won't depart from it. That is what parenting is all about. Parenting might come in one, the daddy or the mother. Or both. Or both. Mm -hmm. But parenting is where we bring these children up in the right way. So they don't be a problem to society. Or to you. Or to you, society. But most mm -hmm. times they be a problem to society. There's too many kids have grown up themselves, money around, they run and ragged. You see them, and, and you know what is so embarrassing? It's so embarrassing to see a young child, a young woman, struggling on her own, on her own. Mm -hmm. struggling to the social service, to this there, running around the place, looking, looking. For food, in some cases, looking for love, 
This is what we bring a vehement young woman to. It's now that men who want to be men stand up to the plate. Have these women, have these young children. You could school for it, you could take care of it. For you to be a good citizen, see, you can't say you wake in the night and be. People respect you and you're not taking care of the child. You remember this this child is gonna be around for a long time and it's a product of you. So I close and let Melanie. One thing I wanna say that I forget. Melody had any shout outs? Yeah, we did. I, I forgot there's a shout out. I must shout out to the singing prophet, Bishop Lawrence Rowan. You continue doing a great job, continue feeding those people, and one day me and Melanie come to see you. And when we come to see you, we just come to see you. As great job, continue it. Melanie? Okay, thank you folks. Thank you so much for joining us again today, and we look forward to seeing you again next week at the same time when we will bring you that promised program. That, and that promised program? <laughs> Every t folks, every time we come for this program, she change it. We can bring you that program. Your pastor ain't your pastor that you think he is. <laughs> is that what we gonna yeah. do next? Religion, week? folks. Not next week. Next week we're gonna take on. You wanna take on something? You say? No, no. We can. We can. But but no. We but, had promised you. We had promised you. When we did um, Why Men Leave Their Wives, that we would go and talk about um, sex and sweet marriage. Sweet, sweet Adam in my letter. Right, uh, sex and marriage. And some Adam. persons have actually asked, when are you going to do it? You promised it, and All it right. hasn't come as yet. Next week, so we, same time, we're going to take on sex, sex in, marriage. in marriage. Right. That means... If your thing ain't working, go get some Viagra or something to help you. All right? Next up. <laughs> <laughs> same place, under the tree. Mel, Tony, same time, 11 o'clock. Hit us up if you, if you have any questions, anything, you'll be right here. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you. See you next time. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your weekend. It's under the tree, chat. Get us up and have a good day. Bye bye.